Hi, my name is Pete Bruno. I'm a local pastor here in North Jersey, and I'm here representing legacy-minded men. This is a man's story. I want to talk to you about Job, probably one of the most misunderstood characters in the Bible. Um, in the first chapter, verse number eight, uh, there is this incredible relationship, personal relationship that God has with Job. Now, I guess I need to add that Job is the oldest book in the Bible, preceding the Pentateuch or the first five books of Moses. And so God said to Satan, have you noticed, I love this, my friend Job. There's no one quite like him, honest and true to his word, totally devoted to me and hated uh, hating evil. Another translation says there's no one on earth like him. Satan retorted, so do you think Job does all that out of sheer goodness of his heart? Why, no one has ever had it so good. You pamper him like a pet, make sure nothing bad ever happens to him and his family or even his possessions. You bless everything he does, he can't lose. But what do you think would happen if you reached down and took away everything that is his? He'll curse you right to your face, and that's what'll happen. God replied, we'll see. Go ahead, just don't hurt him. So Satan begins to uh, manhandle Job with God's seeming per permission. Then Job goes, I'm sorry, Satan goes back to heaven and he talks to God again, and then God gives him permission to go even a little further. Okay, so what does this all mean? Because it's, it's it, boy, it's really hard to preach on some of these things because these principles, wow. I, I would love to just preach and say, listen, Come to Christ, everything is going to be okay. Come fall in love with God, He'll take care of everything. But that type of gospel isn't in Scripture. We see that the disciples suffered, the apostles suffered. Stephen, who had so much going for him, was first martyred. We see first generation Christians that were fed to the lions in the Colosseum. And so we, I believe as a pastor, need to be teaching elements on how to suffer for Christ. Now growing up, the word suffer included sickness, disease, early death, and I think we just need to be careful with those. Because what Christ, I think we need to be cross-centered that what Jesus paid for, we need to believe for. God paid for our sicknesses so we could move toward healing. God paid for our diseases so we could live out our purposes on earth. And so I think there are certain things we need to be careful, but then there are things that life can stink sometimes. It can be rude, it can be blatant, uh, it can be, um, really rough, unfair, in, in, full of injustice. And many times the believer can be right in the center of that. There is something about the fires of life or the traumas of life that test our faith. Now, as a pastor, I've talked to many people after they've gone through situations. And I've had people who have known the Lord for 30 years go through something traumatic and then come to me and say, does God even exist? And, you know, I don't want to show that I'm, a, that I'm taken back by their question because I get it. It's not easy going through life's hardships. But those traumas, those fires will test who your faith is resting on. It, tested Job, and Job came out of the fire pure. Even his friends, who were very religious-minded, 
They were criticizing him and he came through the fires. His own wife said, you've done something wrong. Listen, it, it, it's, it's better. We've lost our children. Uh, our children are dead. Uh, we've lost our possessions. Everything that we had is gone. We've lost all our servants. We've lost all our lands. You've lost your health. The Bible says he had these horrible boils on him. They would scrape with, with uh, shards of uh, uh, broken uh, 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 pottery to, to help move some of the, 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 the sores. And his wife finally just said, just a, you've done something wrong. Just curse God. Get it over with. Just die. And yet through it, he kept moving forward until the point he had this deep conversation with God. God, why have you done this? Have you ever had conversations? Why me? I've had those conversations. Why me, God? Why? why? In fact, even through Psalms and Proverbs, it says, it seems like the righteous prosper, or I'm sorry, the rich prosper, the wicked prosper. And here I'm serving you and look what I'm going through. But we see this pattern, not just with Job, we saw it with Joseph. Joseph is betrayed by his own brothers, grew up in a righteous family. This family would be in line to bring the Savior one day. And he was betrayed. He's serving God to stay pure. He's betrayed by Potiphar or Anne Potiphar's wife. He's put in prison for no particular reason. He could have cursed God and said, God, you know what? You're just unfair, but he believed God. And the Bible says that he came out of prison even stronger. This is a man's story. This is the story of Job, that God wants to give us a real faith medal that gets us through. A medal that's not dependent on if the sun is shining or what season it is. There are times you gotta go through a winter, and sometimes one winter follows another winter, follows another spiritual winter, and you've gotta trek through, knowing that God is there. That's why there are certain verses. Though we walk through the valley of a shadow of death, where there's death everywhere, and you hear things, I can't see my hand in front of my face, there's fear trying to grip me everywhere, or some of those dark corners of life. But to know that God is there, like the psalmist said, God, I know you're right here. And though people have deserted me, you're right here. God would wind up restoring Job and everything that was taken from him, he would restore it many times over. And so God will not play games with you, but life will test you. It'll test your mettle. And so, there used to be an old Marine Corps TV commercial that the Marines never promised you a rose garden. Whenever our gospel tries to make the American dream its center, everything's gonna be wonderful. Oh, you're gonna get better. Everything's just gonna be beautiful. Sometimes life stinks, but why do I have Christ? Because he gets me through. And while others, I have to step over because they're lost and they're dying. I still have my purpose to go through and get to my goals. And so this is what a man's story is. God has called you to be a man in your faith, to stand up and God wants to get you like he told Solomon, put on courage. Well, my name is Pete Bruno. This is a man's story and this is Legacy Minded Men. Thank you so much for joining us today. We hope you were blessed by the material. We also want to remind you that there are several great ways to make sure you're staying up to date on our content as part of our 360 Legacy Plan. First, subscribe to this channel by clicking subscribe below. You can also download our incredible new app in the Apple App Store and Google Play Store. Just search Legacy Minded Men. And finally, visit our website at LegacyMindedMen.org for more information on what we believe, upcoming events, and how to join a group. Thanks again for watching.